7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top Allumage P120 et décollage. The very first Vegas Z on her inaugural flight, clearing the mast, like you said, in a blink of an eye. Trajectoire nominale. Um, just see it through the cloud. Ah, oh, it's a technology high on the leading edge of life there. Pilotage well, calme. Really quick, Dante, and you are not joking. It's like George Russell in a racing car. Trajectoire nominale. From the beach in Kourou. Yes, look at how fast it is. The acceleration is more than 2G. Acquisition. Télémesure par station de Saint-Jean. 200 Formula 1 cars pushing together. Uh, we have, uh, uh, say Les paramètres à bord sont the normaux. Same. The uh, flight director is saying that all the parameters are nominal and everything is going well so far. Yeah, it's already going faster than a fighter jet. It's just past that uh, uh, milestone. Pilotage no calme. We're following the rocket, of course, because it's visually it's uh, it's out of sight. I can actually hear it from the Jupiter control center yes. now. But paramètres à bord normaux. We've got a beautiful quasi-synchronized animation for the duration of the launch. It's uh, not telemetry, uh, telemetry synced, so although we see things happening on the screen, we will wait for the flight director who will announce that the event has actually happened. Um, Trajectoire nominale. Uh, there we go. Everything's normal. The screen is full of information, Dante. Can you give us a little bit of information about all those different parameters? We can see here the ground track, so the projection of the trajectory on the ground, then the altitude. Parameter abord normal. Parameter still nominal, the distance from the launcher and its speed. And of course, the time passed since the liftoff, almost one minute, 40 seconds. Yeah, and we've seen some beautiful external camera shots there. Uh, they are delayed by about 40 seconds à bord normal. for technical reasons. Um, and there we go, everything's still normal. We are currently flying under the propulsion of the P120C developed by Euro Propulsion, a joint venture between Ariane Group and Avio. We're already coming up to a major double milestone in a few seconds. P120. And Dante, will <laughs> Dante will explain what that double milestone is. It's a unique complex separation of the spent Trajectoire nominale. Yes, First we state. are hearing that the trajectory is nominal, parameters are nominal. P120C is slowing uh, its thrust and we are approaching uh, the separation. Let's wait for the announcement of the flight director. The animation. Separation P120. There he goes. He's Allumage Z40. And it's ignited. Yeah, this is uh, already a very major milestone of this flight because we had the in-flight qualification, so demonstration that we fulfilled all the objectives and requirements for this first stage that can be considered qualified for future Vegas emissions and flight proven to be used as strap-on booster for the upcoming Ariane 6. Yeah, so you may have noticed in that 3D animation there that there were some uh, retro rockets. Give us a little... Uh, <laughs> what, what we, have to do that? we have these eight small retro rockets that they provide a retro thrust to the P120C because it is so big and with so much residual iner inertia that we must be sure it won't hit the rest of the rocket once separated. So, of course, we heard the DDO announce, the flight director announced that the Z40 ignition second stage, which has a 90 second, 92 second burn time, uh, and we're doing this dog leg maneuver as well now. So this is the second stage. It's also like the first stage. It's a so solid rocket motor. Talk me through the Z40, Dante. Solid rocket motors that in less than two minutes will bring the rocket up to 16,000 kilometers per hour speed and more than 180 kilometers of altitude. Trajectoire nominale. So look at the camera. The hurt is not flat. <laughs> <laughs> we can see. It well, it wasn't flat 40 clearly. seconds ago. <laughs> we, can, we can't confirm it is flat now. And we have this really nice view from the pilotage calme. The guiding. You can hear the flight director saying pilotage calme. That means in French that the guiding so far is very smooth, and it's a very good sign. Yeah, that's. Les paramètres à bord sont normaux. And parameters are nominal, and then we are approaching uh, also the separation of the second stage that, as well, is doing its first in flight mission. So, in a few seconds, we should listen to the yeah, flight so we're director. We're going to have a two, uh, the second stage separation, and we'll wait for the DDO to announce that. Uh, but we're also going to have ignition of the third stage and fairing release in quick succession. So, pay attention. Uh, we're coming up to that milestone there. It's on the animation. It's here for the DDO. Separation Z40. And there it is, separated. There's the firing on the animation. Frederic. Allumage Z9. Uh, yes, and it is firing. And there was 
my favourite moment. Separation de la coiffe. And uh, Didio confirms it actually happens. It's the separating of the bearings. It's one, <laughs> it's one when you watch it for the first time, you think, what, you know, you're exposing your payload to the uh, rushing wind as the rocket barrels through space. But of course, we're, we're, we're well into space now. We're, we're twice the height of the Kármán line. So Dante, tell me what's happening here. Look, we are already at 194 kilometers of altitude. It means the atmosphere there is so thin that there is no possible harm to the payload. So for this reason, we get rid of the fairing because its aerodynamic and protection functions have expired. And now it has just useless mass. So now we don't want to bring up with us the, to the very end this useless mass because the lighter you are, the more performance you get and the better it is. And look at this. Oh, beautiful, extremely beautiful, the beautiful. beautiful. That you separation the happened 70 seconds ago. With the, the, the <laughs> technical reason for the delay has uh, meant that we, <laughs> we see that it's 70 seconds behind now. But that's actually quite useful because we uh, get to comment on it. And look, look there's the fairing yes. wobbling away. Oh, yeah. that's absolutely beautiful, falling down. That to, like you say, a, a sort of nominal, bord, <laughs> normal. <laughs> so everything's normal. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, what stage are we looking at now? We're looking at the Z9 stage. stage. Yeah, the third, the third stage, stage, and it's flying. Uh, on the animation, uh, talk us through this particular flight because we're going to see a maneuver any second now that's yes. uh, quite interesting. Yes, you have seen now uh, since uh, um, the, the separations of the first and second stage, they fall back into the ocean, nominal. while for the Z9 we are already at 240, we will reach uh, almost 300 kilometers of altitude and it will continue in a ballistic uh, trajectory uh, going on. So we have to manage carefully with this maneuver we are seeing in the animation, it is called the neutral axis maneuver and uh, this way we can manage properly the we fall down point of this uh, third stage that will happen uh, in the polar sea yeah Pilotage calm. And still everything's fine it's telemetry on the screen and the animation represent the exact rocket maneuver so we can see it's absolutely normal following that green track so we'll always hear the confirmation from the flight director that things are happening but uh, the the animation seems to be just before we say and everything is still normal. That third stage is almost spent now. It's um, how is it different? Uh, it's, it's no different from the other two stages, is it? No, it's just smaller, but uh, it brings the most uh, difference in terms of uh, uh, gaining speed. Separation Z9. There we go. The Z9 has separated. Confirmation. It will safely fall near the pole, uh, and this is Vega's. First time around the globe, and unfortunately, uh, last as well. So uh, let's talk about ground stations, actually, Dante. We'll be losing the satellite to a blind spot in the ground station coverage in about 1 minute 30 seconds, I believe. And that's going to be for about 5 minutes. So what exactly does it mean to lose ground station? Oh, well, let's, so let's soak yes, in that view of the blue marble here. For, <laughs> I was listening for the flight director saying that uh, still everything is nominal. So the rocket is guided autonomously by its own board computer. That is good. Oh, no one is goes. with the joystick piloting it. <laughs> Just watching the Z, that, that separation of the stage yeah, falling this down. This is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, still, there, uh, this is still uh, not yeah. flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what uh, we have to absolutely uh, 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 need to do is to constantly know where it is the uh, launcher and how it is doing. We have listened so far to, Saint -Jean. Yes, to the various announcements from the flight director and he can do this only because we have this ground station. So big antennas spread all around the world that are there to uh, retrieve all the telemetry data coming normal. from the rocket. In this way, uh, we know what is happening and that everything is nominal, and uh, as uh, the flight director just announced it. And each antenna has a visibility cone, and when we design the mission, we don't only um, maximize and optimize the performance, but we must also ensure. But look, oh, we have. That's the payload. Uh, yes, yes, an inside view of the Laris 2 uh, inside the fairing. Well, if you think it looks like a, uh, <laughs> if you think it looks like a mirror ball, <laughs> yeah, indeed, it really does. It really does. And I think we've just had announced that the uh, telemetry was lost there. Perte normal de la télémesure en fin de visibilité. Exactly. And so I was saying that uh, thanks to the, we ensure that all the main events happen in full visibility.
Yeah, so we're higher than the ISS. I don't know how we managed to miss it, but we <laughs> we managed to miss, uh, managed to miss the uh, ISS there. So there was confirmation the rocket's out of sight, but it's certainly not out of mind. She's bravely flying all on her own. Uh, what, what happened?